everybody and welcome to my garden cabin where I do my uh, swifting on my treadmill and Daisy appears sometimes. She's somewhere over there. I think she's waiting for more biscuits. Conscious in this uh, terribly worrying times at the moment that more and more people may be looking to run on treadmills or just running from home. So what uh, I thought I would do is a very interesting test that I've been meaning to do for a while is to look further into this um, theory that you need to be running at 1% on a treadmill to equal how, um, how, you, how you run outdoors. There was a study in 1996 by uh, a couple of research, UK researchers called Andrew Jones and Jonathan Doust. They had uh, various runners running at uh, different speeds, starting from 10.5 kph up 12 kph, 13 kph, 15 kph, 16.5 kph and 18 kph. And they found that the slower speeds, uh, which equate to a 9 minute 11 mile and an 802 mile, there wasn't actually any difference between 0% and, um, and outside. But when it got to 709 pace, then at 1% that seemed about right. And as it got higher, the speeds, then anything from about 1% to 2% was the same. Now, I also thought for me that on the treadmill, that uh, the treadmill and outside felt fairly similar. So what we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna run on Zwift for about um, two laps um, on on the track at each of these different speeds, and then go straight outside and run uh, run my block, um, so I don't have to travel too far in these uh, times when you're not really uh, supposed to, and uh, see how they compare. So we'll. Um, You'll now see some footage of me um, hopefully doing that and we'll report back later with some results. Okay, see you later, bye. Okay, so nearly coming to the end of our first 800 meters at 10.5. Got the at 0% because that's why I normally use it on. So I'm keen to see whether there's a difference here or not. Okay, so here I am outside on my road. Uh, this is a road in Claygate in Surrey, not far from London. So it was a classic run around the block. Now I mentioned my block earlier, it's just under half a mile. I've got a segment around it as well, I think, of course, as you might expect. And uh, I think I've about, I mean, maybe two people have ever run it. So uh, not trying to for the course record today, just trying to run this um, at, uh, what did I say, 9.11 pace. I've got a lap screen here. So I need to press lap and then uh, keep that at 9.11. Okay, so we're back indoors uh, in the order of my cabin where the treadmill is. So this time I'm going to go for uh, 12 kph, which is uh, pretty much exactly an eight minute mile. That's right on John Hancock. Who can Zwift give you ride ons? A bit like Kudos is in Strava. Okay, so back outside again. So ready for this uh, second run outdoors, which is going to run at eight minute mile pace exactly for around the block, which is about half a mile. Okay, so that was perfectly, almost exactly on eight minute mile pace, just a few seconds under, but near enough, I think, given the air of this. So let's go back on the treadmill and do the next one, which is 13.5 kph now. Okay, hello. So now we're back outside for the 13 and a half kph run, which is a 709 mile. Yeah, it's okay. It's about 7:13, so it was only about five or ten seconds out on this outdoor ones, but near enough. Right, let's get on to the next one, which is a 15 kph effort. Okay, so the 15 kph 626-ish one done. Definitely feel like I was running faster there. I think, if anything, I was running too fast. I didn't take the GoPro with me, so <laughs> it was easy to swing the arms. Probably it's 150, oh, right. Heading out for the last one then. 16 and a half kph. Hello everybody, so I'm back indoors now. This is actually a couple of days later, so I had a chance to analyze the results and put them into the, my customary spreadsheet. So let's just take you through what we're seeing here. So I've got the Zwift treadmill run uh, on the top there in each of these five different runs. So the first uh, Zwift run was at 10.5 kph. Then it was increasing 1.5 kph each time. So 12.0 on the second one, 13.5. Now 13.5 was the one which is equivalent to the 709 pace, which is the point in the Jones and Downs uh, uh, paper where they found that the 1% started to kick in 
and then I was able to, uh, with increasing difficulty, take it to 15 kph and 16.5. The paper actually did an 18 point um, kph one, but uh, I didn't feel quite uh, uh, zappy enough to actually do that. So let's just take you through. So what I did was roughly to run for approximately half a mile uh, each step. It wasn't quite that. So I just, I, in the end, I just took out the bit where I was accelerating. So these distances and times were I was kind of in full flow, as it were. Now, as you can see from the first outdoor one, I actually ran it far too quickly, so I uh, probably had to ignore that one. Uh, on the second one, I actually got it far better. So I got an 803 pace, uh, obviously from running exactly at 12.0 indoors. And outdoors, I was able to get that more or less exactly right. Uh, the orange there is the speed in KPH, so you can see 12.0 on the treadmill. 12.1 outdoors. So I, was using, I was using my Garmin and my lap pace and uh, to try and control it. And then subsequently, um, I was, uh, there you see, I've just a fraction over and again there. So it's all a fairly similar effort. Now the course I did for my outdoor run was, is reasonably flat run a lot. There's a little bit of a downhill, very slight downhill bit early on with a very slight um, uphill bit at the end. So you'd probably say it's slightly harder than running just a, a smooth, uh, flat, treadmill um, circuit, obviously, which is a pan flat course if you have it 0%, which I had in all these ones. So another interesting thing is to look at the heart rate and the power. And as I said, we could probably ignore the first one because I made a bit of a botch of the pacing there. Um, but if you look at the, the second set, um, you can see that my average heart rate was identical. So it kind of shows that I was pretty in a very similar effort. Um, if we then move on to the next one, again, it's only literally one B out. So um, pretty again, showing us showing a very similar effort. Now by the fourth one, I was having to work a bit harder and also don't forget that I actually run fairly hard on the Zwift and then headed straight out. I think it took me about two minutes between getting off the treble and getting outside to actually start running. So although the average heart rate there was a bit higher, uh, I did run slightly faster and had perhaps a bit of residual fatigue and the same thing applied to the last one. Now if we look at the powers, um, now what's interesting to note here that obviously indoors we don't get any uh, uh, impact from the wind so that's why the air percent is obviously zero when I was indoors. When I was outdoors, I obviously had some uh, some effect from the wind. There was a bit of wind out on um, when I did this test on Saturday. Um, so what I've also done is I've taken out the component of the wind um, to see how those then um, net powers compare. And again, they're fairly similar. I mean, the outdoor power is slightly higher, but again, we did have that section, as I said, with a slight uphill in it. So I think it's always going to be a bit more power when you've got an uphill section as opposed to a pan flat course. Um, I did also use the Stride Summit, the one, the oldest version of the Stride with no wind detection. Um, but if you look closely between the green section there, the net power and the Stride Summit, those figures are almost identical, which is, which is reassuring to show that both of those, um, both um, taking out the air power uh, on a, and then on a different um, Stride give the same values. Now, another thing that's really, really interesting here is that if you look at my uh, cadence indoors to outdoors, it's each time it's six steps per minute higher outdoors. <clears throat> now I've also noticed that before, I always thought it was about four or five steps per minute. This really does confirm that outdoors I seem to have, I seem to run with a higher uh, cadence. Um, so I need to look into that more because apart from everything else, <clears throat> all these efforts do look to be fairly similar. Um, the vertical oscillation <coughs> is, having said that, the vertical oscillation uh, indoors on the treadmill is obviously a bit higher, perhaps because of the fact that I'm uh, more bouncy on, on that treadmill than I am outdoors. I was wearing the Pegasus Turbo 2s in this test, in each of them, so I suppose that is a fairly bouncy shoe with the Zoom X. But I would say um, what I also did, I'll just show you the clip in a minute, was actually went out and uh, made sure that my treadmill really was at 0% when it says 0%, so I put the um, the app on the iPhone on it, um, and also a spirit level. And I think it, within, uh, it was showing after a while of stabilization, exactly 0% um, green flat. So I think um, 
we can rule out the uh, my cabin floor having any effect on the treadmill incline. So what I take for this on my treadmill, for me, um, I'm not seeing this need to put it at one percent, which is reassuring because I, from other runs that I've done in the past, um, did a fair bit of marathon pace training before my Seville Sub Three 256 run, um, what seems like a lifetime ago in um, um, Seville last month. Um, I found that actually all this, often the treadmill harder. So I think hopefully this sort of demonstrates um, that. You know, the treadmill and outdoors are fairly similar in terms of effort for me at 0%. But there's this question mark as to why the cadence is so different. So is your running style just that much different indoors? So maybe that's the subject of another video. So I hope you found that's interesting. And uh, if you need to get on a treadmill, maybe you can give me your thoughts on the same thing. And uh, let me know how you get on with a similar test if you can do so. Okay, see you on the next one then. Bye. <laughs> Daisy, what do you think of those shoes? SL20s and the Rincons. I think you're for the SL20s. What do you think? Yeah. Maybe it's another video. Right, see you later, Daisy.